Hello, I'm Giulia Pettena. This is the module about Fiesole. It's a, a, an historical archaeological visit. So first we will do an historical introduction and then we will do an immersive experience uh, to discover all the archaeological ruins uh, around uh, the hill of Fiesole. Before Florence, there was Fiesole. A few kilometers away, on a double hill overlooking Florence, is Fiesole, an ancient Etruscan city famed for its healthy atmosphere and the presence of people from all over the world. Nestled above a hillside of olives and cypresses, Fiesole strikes the visitor as both rather special and rich in culture. Fiesole lies on high ground dominating the Arno Valley to the south and the Munione Valley to the northwest. It spreads over two hills, San Francesco and Santa Collinare, and the saddle in between, where the modern town is situated. There has been a human presence on the two hills, which from a distance evoke the characteristic shape of a sickle moon, and indeed is represented as such on its crest, since as early as the Bronze Age, so around 2000 BC. The magic of the landscape of Fiesole has been described and depicted over the centuries by painters, writers, poets, and artists of all kinds. Fiesole is of Etruscan origin, as may be seen from the remains of its ancient walls uh, and was probably founded in the 9th century BC and named Viesul or Visul Vipsul. The first recorded mansion on the town dates back to 283 BC when the town, then known as, Fie as Fesule, was conquered by the Romans. One possible reason for the prosperity of Etruscan and Roman Fiesole could be its location near a ford over the river Arno, close to where Roman Florence, Florencia, would rise. Fiesole's location also made it strategic for travelers and merchants on all the main roads between southern and central Etruria, the land of the Etruscan, to the south of Italy covering large parts of present-day regions of Tuscany, Umbria and Latium, and the Etruscans in the area around the Po Valley to the north of Italy. So, the great city of Fiesole was founded by the Etruscans, the most sophisticated and powerful people in Italy before the Romans. Then, conquered by the Romans in the 3rd century BC during their expansion in Italy and after the fall of the Roman Empire by uh, the Germanic Lombards in the 6th, 7th century AD. In pagan antiquity, it was the seat of a famous school of augurs or soothsayers, and every year 12 young men were sent here from Rome to study the art of divination. In the early Middle Ages, Fiesole was more powerful than Florence in the valley below. And many wars arose, arose between them, the two cities. In 1010 and 1025, Fiesole was sacked brutally by the Florentines before it was conquered by Florence in the age of the Comuni, exactly in 1125, amidst widespread destruction and its leading family uh, had been obliged to take up their residence in Florence. This marked the decline of the city, which was reduced to a heap of ruins and was used as a source of building materials for the nearby dominant city, Florence. The most important building material quarried here on the hills of Fiesole was uh, the local sandstone called Pietra Serena that was of fundamental importance for the prestigious architecture and decor of the Renaissance and was used extensively for in innumerable items of both an artistic and everyday nature. That is paving stones, stairs, door frames, shelves, fountains, fireplaces, benches, basins, revetments, etc. Throughout the Florence area and in many Italian and foreign cities. 
after the conquest, Florence granted administrative autonomy to Fiesole, which imitated it in the organization of its public offices with the Podestà, Gonfalonieri and craft and professional guilds. Impetus for the intellectual and spiritual life in Fiesole was provided by, by two major religious orders, the Franciscans and the Dominicans. The Dominicans based themselves in San Domenico, whose importance is reflected in some of the illustrious figures who spent time there, Domenico Buonvicini, Sant'Antonino and Giovanni da Fiesole, known as Angelico. The Florentine merchant classes saw to the complete reorganization of the agrarian landscape. The Franciscans settled on the western hill, on the spot occupied by the ancient 45 stronghold, hence the name San Francesco, the name of the hill, setting up what became the oldest Franciscan convent in Tuscany. About the illustrious figures who frequented Fiesole, there's Leonardo da Vinci, who had a property here in Fiesole and uh, uh, tried his famous flying machine from the hill of Monte Ceceri, that you can see in the background. The flying machine uh, worked for a while, but then crashed at the basis of the hill. By the 14th century, rich Florentines had countryside villas in Fiesole, and one of them is the setting of the frame narrative of the Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio da Certaldo. From the 14th century onwards, a significant portion of the working population of Fiesole were quarrymen and stone cutters in the quarries of Pietra Serena, the local grey sandstone, originally used by the Etruscans and Romans for building and decorative items, and which was intensively exploited for the needs of Florence and Fiesole itself. The Renaissance saw the embellishment of the area's houses and churches, the building of villas and layout of gardens, and the creation of an abundance of sculptural and pictorial works, many of which can still be found today in their original locations. Over the centuries, Fiesole has succeeded in preserving its view and hills, which have remained unspoilt. The cypress, said to have been introduced by the Etruscans, was in fact intensely propagated by Romantic culture and was used widely by the upper classes as a decorative element for their villas and houses. From the 17th century onwards, many well-known travelers, artists and writers be began to sojourn in Fiesole, leaving memories and traces of their presence in the local and Tuscan culture. The peak of this foreign presence was for sure the 19th century. Between 1865 and 1870, Florence was the capital of Italy, and Fiesole, which since Renaissance times had been home to many aristocratic families and cultured Florentine merchants, became a much sought after area for the new bourgeois classes. The sumptuous villas and, vi uh, and houses on the slopes of the hill bear testimony to this. Modern Fiesole shows evidence of the Middle Ages as well as later buildings and works of art. It offers the possibility, indeed, to go back to the time of the Etruscans and the Romans, uh, whose city is no more visible because of successive historical layers, uh, with a visit of the spectacular archaeological area and museum and other ruins around the city. The great history and art of Middle Age and Renaissance Florence have been preceded and prepared by the two civilizations, the Etruscans and the Romans, who first settled in the area and made of Italy the cultural engine of Europe and all the Western world. That of the Etruscans was the most important civilization in Italy before the Romans. They developed their striking culture here in Tuscany and the nearby regions with a territorial and political organization dominated by strong and rich city-states, including Fiesole. Usually, Etruscan cities were, were set up on the hills for defense. With the Etruscans, the primitive settlements on the hilltop were greatly developed into a distinct urban plan, 
especially at the end of the 6th, beginning of the 5th century BC, as a result of the increased activity on the Apennine routes to the north. On the way, in fact, have been found many stone monuments, so-called stele fiesolane. There were funerary markets in local sandstone, Pietra Serena, to commemorate important personalities that belonged to the most prosperous social class in the region. An imposing ring of walls dating back to the 4th century BC, stretching for over two and a half kilometers, lengthening stretches of which can still be seen along the eastern and northern perimeter. These walls were erected to defend Fiesole from northern invasion, especially that of the Gauls, and to control trade and communication routes between the Arno River, central and southern Etruria, and Etruscan cities in the Po Valley to the north. For the period from the end of the 4th to the 1st century BC, there are a few elements from ancient sources, but the archaeological evidence is, however, quite significant, revealing a city already organized in terms of its fundamental features. The walls, the terracing, the temple, the necropolis, with a considerable level of economic and social development. This is the northern part of the hill of Fiesole. As you can see uh, in the background, uh, is overlooking the valley of the river Mugnone, and you can see the first uh, hills uh, of uh, the Apennines. So um, this was one of the reasons why the Etruscans uh, uh, founded a city here to control the commercial routes that were going uh, from the land of the Etruscans uh, to the north uh, of uh, Italy. From here arrived uh, a lot of invasions, especially uh, from the north, the Gauls. So the Gauls that in the started in the 4th century throughout the 3rd century BC to invade Italy in three waves. Uh, the first wave of the beginning of the 4th century um, brought the Gauls uh, uh, throughout central Italy and they arrived in Rome, brutally sacking and destroying a large part of ancient Rome. Exactly in this century, the Etruscan decided to encircle with walls, uh, especially thick in this northern part, uh, to defend their city from these invasions. Other invasions in the same century, but especially in the third, arrived from Rome. The Rome started to expand to the north uh, and uh, um, in the land of the Etruscans, so conquering many of their cities. Walking around modern Fiesole, we can see many stretches of the original Etruscan walls. This is the northern part of the city, and there is the uh, longest stretch uh, still on site. Uh, as you can see, the walls that uh, were uh, built in the 4th century BC were made of large blocks uh, of uh, local sandstone, Pietra Serena, and uh, uh, originally uh, they were encircling an area of, of, a, of a length of about two uh, and a half kilometers. Originally were in many parts um, high five meters and had a thickness of uh, uh, more than two meters. The large block sets in regular courses, uh, as uh, was usual for the Etruscans. So um, the walls, uh, for sure, were partially destroyed by the Romans, especially in this part of the city, because they used them uh, as a substructure for the um, uh, large platform and terracing, uh, where to build their great monuments, the theater, the temple, and the baths. Then uh, the Lombards, uh, preserved when they um, established here in, in Fiesole after the fall of the Roman Empire during the 6th and the 7th century AD, uh, so Fiesole could maintain the strategic and powerful uh, uh, role uh, in central Italy. 
Finally, with the invasion of the Florentines uh, in 1125, many parts of the walls were destroyed. But as you can see, many are still on site. Was uh, in the 4th century, the Etruscans uh, gave an urbanistic layout to Fiesole. And uh, around the city, we can see imposing terracing works uh, that the Etruscans used uh, uh, to uh, build the city on the slopes of the hill. So we can see some remnants of these uh, uh, terracing works uh, uh, around the city, uh, especially in San Francesco, so up on the hill that we have already visited, uh, and uh, here uh, in between Via Portigiana and Via Marini, so to the north uh, uh, of uh, the original central square and the current one, Piazza Mino, uh, and uh, to the south uh, of the archaeological area. Here we are uh, near the archaeological area of Fiesole, uh, drinking uh, an espresso, <laughs> uh, and I'm here to uh, describe you um, another uh, very important, the most not northworthy uh, Etruscan uh, um, ruins uh, that have been found in Fiesole. It stands in, arch in the archaeological area, and uh, it's uh, the temple. The temple uh, was built in the fourth century. Uh, on a specially landfill created uh, um, near the northern wall uh, on a special terracing uh, and uh, um, on a pre existing uh, um, uh, worship site, so on a pre existing uh, sacred site. The Etruscan temple stood on a very high platform uh, and uh, to which you could access through pairs of uh, steps, so flight of steps, uh, and then you could access uh, a wide portico uh, with columns uh, and uh, a single cella. Then the Etruscan temples had uh, a rigid roof covered in uh, terracotta tiles, and all uh, and many um, archaeological objects that have been found around uh, are especially votive gifts. So statuettes uh, reproducing uh, gods or especially the worshippers and uh, um, uh, anatomical parts. The fact that were found many an anatomical parts um, uh, is uh, uh, important because probably the, um, uh, the, the temple was dedicated to a healing uh, god. Like all the Etruscan temples, the temple in Fiesole was decorated in terracotta. Terracotta elements uh, depicting uh, warriors uh, or uh, slabs uh, with geometrical patterns. The terracotta was used to protect uh, the wooden framework of the roof uh, of the temple. Then there were other terracotta elements called antefixes that were used to close the gap uh, that uh, at um, the edge of the roof uh, where the round tiles were. Uh, the Temple of Fiesole was not the only one having uh, this uh, um, uh, great and beautiful colored terracotta. Uh, it was very common uh, all over the Truria, starting from the 6th century BC. The Temple of Fiesole was of the 4th. Other um, um, sites of cult, uh, of worships, uh, were around the city, so on the southern slopes uh, uh, of Fiesole, so facing Florence, uh, and on top of the hill of San Francesco, where originally um, th there was the Acropolis, uh, so the stronghold. Here we are in another part of modern Fiesole, Via del Bargellino. Is the, and is the site where uh, was found the only uh, Etruscan Roman necropolis here in Fiesole. So, uh, in the 19th century, uh, were discovered here six tombs, uh, now are visitable only two. These tombs are dating back, again, to the Hellenistic age, so 
the fourth, third century originally, and then later reused for a long time. As you can see, the tombs are large rectangular rooms with frontal door, then uh, uh, walls, thick walls in uh, uh, blocks uh, of pietra serena, local sandstone, and having uh, very heavy slabs uh, um, as uh, a roof uh, and uh, uh, a closing uh, rock uh, uh, as a door. The tombs uh, had inside um, several steps that were used to um, depose uh, the cinerary urns uh, uh, where the ashes of the deceased were put. These probably were familiar tombs, so we could find inside several uh, of these containers together with uh, precious uh, grave goods. This necropolis, so these cemeteries, uh, necropolis means the city of the dead, uh, was located uh, originally outside the city walls uh, on uh, the northeastern uh, part. And uh, uh, was here because, according to the urbanistic rules of uh, uh, the ancient cities, uh, the cemeteries uh, had to put always outside the ring of walls. This is Piazza Mino da Fiesole, is the very center of uh, modern Fiesole, the main square, as used to be during ancient times. Uh, Especially in Roman times, uh, we are sure that this was the forum. Mm? So, uh, the center of the city where all the public buildings, uh, the most important political, uh, religious, uh, uh, and economical buildings used to be. So, as we said before, the Romans in their expansion uh, uh, throughout Italy, uh, arrived here in Etruria, especially in northern Etruria, in the 3rd century BC. So we have the first historical record of uh, Roman Fiesole with the new name Fesule in, 2000, in 263 BC. Then there are other several historical documents uh, about Roman Fiesole and uh, especially uh, during the time of uh, uh, civil uh, and, uh, the, and social wars. For example, Fiesole, that was part uh, of the group of the allies of Rome uh, called the Sochi, uh, parted against Rome, against the Roman Republic uh, in the social war in between uh, uh, 90 and 88 BC. So, um, this resulted in a defeat and a devastation of the city. Then again, Fiesole parted for General Gaius Marius uh, against Cornelius Silla, uh, and uh, was again uh, on the losing side. So Silla uh, transformed Fiesole in a Roman colony in 80 BC, uh, transferring here his uh, veterans, his ex soldiers. These uh, historical events uh, were especially important for uh, the new layout of the city, a layout that will remain unchanged, uh, unchanged more or less uh, till the 19th century. After uh, the time of Silla, uh, so and the establishment of the colony of Fiesole, um, the, the city acquired the, the common layout of Roman towns. So, as we said, with a square, a forum as the center of the city, and then monumental buildings. Uh, monumental buildings, especially, were uh, built during the time of Emperor Augustus, so in between the first BC and the first AD. So, uh, Fiesole started to have uh, a theater. Uh, then uh, uh, a bath complex, uh, and probably more than one, and uh, uh, a new temple established on, uh, on top of the Etruscan one. 
In the main square, as used to be in Roman towns, uh, there was the most important uh, temple uh, dedicated to the deities, protector of the city, the so-called Capitolium. Probably the Capitolium was located where is today the church of Santa Maria in Primerana, uh, that's overlooking Piazza Mino, uh, and uh, mm, uh, we uh, think that here there, there was uh, the, um, uh, the Capitolium because uh, uh, in, 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 in the, inside the church and, on the, uh, and uh, englobated in the walls, there are uh, some uh, Roman elements as columns. Uh, and then was found in this uh, area uh, an inscription saying that the inhabitants of Florencia, so of Roman Florence, uh, contributed to the restoration of the Capitolium of Fiesole. So this inscription was found exactly uh, here, together with a bronze statue of uh, what was interpreted as a she-wolf, that you know is uh, the animal symbol of ancient Rome, but that probably is a lioness. And uh, uh, is a lioness. So um, probably the totem animal uh, protecting the city. These two elements, uh, uh, made the, uh, the historians and archaeologists thinking that in this place uh, that, as you can see, is preserving uh, so the sacred nature, there was the ancient Capitolium, uh, the main temple of the city. We are uh, in the northwestern part of Piazza Mino, uh, and so of the ancient Forum, and uh, uh, I'm walking along the walls of the Cathedral of San Romulus. Who was uh, San Romulus? Romulus was uh, um, uh, a noble Roman guy that, according to the legend, was sent here in the first century uh, directly by St. Peter to uh, establish uh, one of the most ancient uh, Christian communities uh, uh, here in the area. Uh, so, um, the cathedral was entitled, when it was originally built in 1028, to Romulus. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the relics of the saint were then brought here, uh, and uh, so uh, St. Romulus became the patron of the city, of the city of Fiesole. So this is uh, uh, the town hall, Palazzo Comunale of Fiesole, dating back to the 14th century. And you can, you can see preserving uh, so the original structures, uh, uh, especially with many uh, coat of arms uh, of uh, the Podestà Gonfalonieri uh, of Fiesole, so the authorities in uh, uh, late medieval age and uh, after. In the back of uh, Palazzo del Comune, Palazzo Comunale, recent excavation discovered uh, Roman buildings and a Lombard cemetery that we are going to see right now. These excavations are very interesting because uh, we can see part of the layout of the city. The terracing uh, that we mentioned for the Etruscans uh, are visible here. So this terracing is original of the 4th, 3rd century BC. So when uh, the Etruscan gave the lay, uh, layout to their town. But the structures that we can see today, so imposed on uh, uh, the terracing, uh, are especially uh, of uh, the period called uh, Julio Claudian, so of the family of Augustus, the first emperor, so first century BC AD. So when the Roman towns had uh, the, um, uh, the, the final layout. Uh, here we can see. Uh, an insula, so a block of the city, 
uh, having um, inside a large house called Domus. So this house was organized uh, around an open courtyard um, and uh, with uh, several rooms uh, opening from it. Then later, in the 2nd, 3rd century uh, AD, this uh, domus was transformed uh, in a market. So the rooms of the house were used as a closed market for foodstuff called the macellum. And in the southwestern part, so uh, exactly on the back of the Palazzo Comunale, there was probably uh, um, a restaurant, mm? so a place for refreshment called Caupona. So in late antiquity, uh, when uh, the Roman Empire was declining, uh, Tiesole and Florence were a theater of uh, a lot of wars. Uh, uh, so Fiesole was conquered by the Ostrogoths and then together with Florence by the Byzantines in the 6th century. Here in Fiesole was established uh, a, long, uh, a Lombard village. Uh, so the um, town was reduced very much uh, in the buildings. Uh, no more used the monumental buildings. And in many parts of the city, as here, where used to be the Domus and then uh, the Baths, uh, the Lombards uh, established one of their cemeteries. So, um, using the structures of the previous Roman buildings, uh, they um, started to bury their dead, you see, in trenches uh, with um, uh, stone all around uh, and uh, then covered with a stone lid. The deceased was uh, uh, lying down on uh, the back uh, and then accompanied by some grave goods uh, uh, to show um, the, the social position and importance in the community. Uh, um, reconstruction of these Lombard tombs uh, uh, are now in the Archaeological Museum here in, Fio in Fiesole. Here we are uh, in the back of the ancient forum and uh, is the entrance of the archaeological area. Uh, so, where uh, excavations found the monumental area of the city with a theater, uh, a bath complex, uh, and a temple. So, we are going now to explain the different uh, monuments, uh, starting from the theater and then uh, going on. The columns that you can see in the background uh, are uh, part of what was uh, the entrance uh, to uh, the theater uh, from uh, the main square of the city, the Forum. The theater that was built during the time of Emperor Augustus, so we are in the first century. So the area to the north of the Forum, set against the northern walls, uh, uh, was subject to a total restructuring with a monumental layout of the area. Uh, as we said, uh, uh, with the building of a theater, a bath complex, uh, and a new temple. It was during the age of Augustus, the first emperor of Rome, uh, dating 27 BC, 14 AD, it began the construction of a theater in Fiesole. Part was dug out of the rock, taking advantage of the natural slope and part built up. The entrance uh, of, uh, from the Forum was through uh, a, a portico, uh, then uh, giving way to um, the various sector of the cavea, the seating area, through entrances that were called vomitoria, because uh, uh, they were used for a rapid discharge, so the origin of uh, the, the, the word vomit. Or from the side of the building, to reach the lower seats, uh, that were in marble, and uh, were uh, used to put uh, chairs for personalities of the city or guests. The cave of the Theatre of Fiesole could host up to 3,000 spectators. 
Among the materials discovered in the area, uh, there were marble slabs with decoration in relief uh, depicting the god Dionysus, uh, so the patron of theater, uh, probably decorating the front of the low retaining wall of the stage, uh, as well as fragments of portraits, uh, so statues, uh, of the imperial families uh, or of local personalities uh, decorating the theater. The stage uh, was closed in the back by a scena, a wall set as a scenery, and the portico be behind it for the people to stroll uh, around, uh, maybe when they were waiting uh, for the performance. The curtain was raised and lowered through a machinery set in a horse-shaped hole to the side of the stage. From the theater, you could reach easily through a paved street, both a sacred area and a large bath structure. Among the public structures completed during Roman times, uh, we should mention the water supply system made up of an aqueduct uh, which brought water from the nearby springs of Montereggi. The large bath complex of Fiesole has a rectangular plan with a portico on three sides. At the center there were two basins or pools and a courtyard to exercise. A third pool was outside. The close part, as always in Roman bath complexes, was a real wellness path. A short staircase provided access from the courtyard to the tepidarium or war room, warm room, before which there was a small dressing room where people could leave their clothes. In the tepidarium, people could get used to a warm temperature. After the tepidarium, to the right, people could reach the calidarium or hot room with hot temperature and hot baths. The heating was provided by ovens which inflated hot air under the floor and through the walls, and heated the water for the baths. The Calidarium in Fiesole preserves part of the suspended floor and of the hollowed bricks of the wall used for the heating system. After the Calidarium and another passage through the Tepidarium, people usually entered the Frigidarium to the left of the Tepidarium, where there was the final step of the wellness path. A very cold bath, here separated from the room by three arches and originally decorated in marble. In the northwest corner of the complex, there was a toilet or latrine, where we can see the anchorage of the wooden original seats. On the other side of the theater, there was the temple. The previous Etruscan temple was destroyed by a fire at the beginning of the first century BC, destructions after the social war, and rebuilt shortly after, preserving the same plan and orientation, but elevating the floor and enlarging the structures. The new walls, made with larger stones, are set against the older walls. In front of the Roman building, there is a monumental stairway, giving access to the frontal portico, and to the rear rooms uh, uh, used for cult. As usual in antiquity, in front of the temple there are altars, in this case two altars, one of Etruscan and one of Roman age, where the priests used to perform the sacrifices. The finding of a knowlet around the temple led to the hypothesis that the Roman temple of Fiesole was dedicated to the goddess Minerva, whose symbolic animal was the owl. So, in this monumental era of Fiesole, are grouped three of the most important buildings uh, uh, that we usually find in uh, Roman towns. So, a uh, sacred place, then uh, two places for entertainment, uh, the theater, mm, uh, and uh, the uh, bath complex. So the baths were 
particularly important in uh, Roman towns uh, uh, because we're places we, where people could exercise uh, and uh, clean themselves. Uh, but especially where meeting places, uh, where the people used to go um, daily uh, to uh, meet other people and uh, even to discuss their businesses. Uh, 